for the last week or so, I've been tracking this AT&T tower build and upgrade over at my home site. Uh, the site itself is a ginormous uh, construction. Uh, T-Mobile's at the very top, which is probably a lot easier to work on that gear. It's also taller, which kind of helps a carrier if they need to push the signal out further. Nonetheless, this is an incredible site, a perfect opportunity for carriers to put up equipment and address the capacity needs and the coverage needs of their customers. And the site is finished. The company that was doing the installation, I want to give a shout out to Fordcom out of East Palestine, Ohio. They did the upgrade. It took them, I'd say, probably five business days. And the upgrade is done. They did C-band. They did DOD. So both of the those frequencies. Uh, that gear is here in the middle, these two smaller ones. Um, let me see what else is going on here. They did some of the upgrades for band 2 and band 66. They did a, a radio upgrade for the band 12, band 29, and band 14. They did a lot, and they did it pretty fast. They worked pretty efficiently. So the upgrade's done, and I actually got to see some of the stuff that they did. Uh, so here's the things that we really care about, obviously, the the capacity, these two you got the C-band at the bottom here, and then you have the DOD at the top. And I can't wait to test all this for you guys. And it's going to reach the HQ, and it's going to be fantastic. We'll test it through all the levels, run it through its paces, the range, the capacity, everything. It's going to be great. So more coverage here. Uh, but I want to show you guys some of the gear that's inside the shelter where all of the brains of the tower is. All right, And by brains, I mean all the stuff that you know actually powers the tower. All right, what you guys see here, uh, we have the fiber connections, we have the baseband unit. All right, so those are uh, some important elements to networking. I don't know if you guys have ever seen any of this gear. This is the first time I've seen a lot of this in an AT&T site. I've previously seen this in a T-Mobile site, actually the same site. So I've actually uh, been on the same premise, but their, their shelter is actually next to this one, right? So they don't share the same space. All right, so that's what that picture will show you. This picture will show you all of the power connections. So this is where all your converters are, all your power, and um, each of the sectors gets its power and all the radios get powered. It goes into this like squid thing at the top, I guess is what they call it, where all the fiber and power goes and then it gets distributed, you know, to each of the sectors. And in this particular instance, up on the water tower, the first sector is easy to get to and the other two sectors are a challenge because all the cabling has to go around the site. Uh, so it's kind of a pain. But uh, anyways, nonetheless, I would think you guys would enjoy this, looking at some of these internals. And then here is what I think is the most impressive part. This is the actual backup batteries. One, two, three. There are four in a row. We have three rows. Those are 12 batteries. I'm not even joking, guys. These batteries are very tall, and they also are very deep. It's like it seemed like it was like twice the capacity of an actual like car battery, like a passenger vehicle. That's what it seemed like when I was looking at them. So you have 12 of them here on this one. We'll check this out. This is right next to the other one. You have an additional eight of them right here <laughs> with potential for four more. This is crazy. So, you know, there's a couple of different ways you could do backup power, right? You could have a generator with diesel fuel. You could have a generator that runs a natural gas. Or you can have batteries and these things will, you know, charge and recharge with, you know, the power that's available available on the grid. So these things are charged up and ready, ready to go in case they fail. Now, there is one more thing I want to pull this up here. These are the dedicated band 14 radios. This is the first net radios. These typically go up on the site, but they didn't put them up there. And I'm not sure why, you know, maybe maybe it's a. A safety thing i you know like they wanted to keep these things cool i have no idea <laughs> you know maybe because it is part of the first net thing i don't know uh but from what i understand the last thing the tower crew did in terms of putting gear up on the tower site they moved these back up there all right so they they transported them they didn't upgrade them they didn't change anything you'd see all these connections are pretty clean they don't get they don't get weathered or anything so they probably had to do some weather proofing some covers and probably some ends and caps and stuff like that. Uh, but these went right back up to the top of the site with the upgrade. They took them out of here and they put them up on the top of the site. So the the upgrade is done, guys. It is absolutely finished. And it is time 
to get this thing on air. And they, they this site could go on air literally any day now, uh, from what I understand, during any maintenance window. You know, should AT&T Engineering decide to turn it on, they can remotely and they will. And then I'll be looking for that 5G plus icon on my phone here any day. And I'll be making content testing it. We'll test outdoors, front and back of the crib. We'll test top level, main level, lower level, you know, um, in the lab. And we'll see. We'll see how it performs. I'm excited. I think it's going to be very fast. All right. We've got, uh, man, uh, 10 by 10 band 14. 15 by 15 band 12, uh, 10 for downlink on band 29. You've got 40 megahertz of N77. The DoD isn't going to go on until Q3. You have 20 megahertz of band 2, 20 megahertz of band 66, and you have 10 by 10 on band 30. All of that is on this site, and this is a 10 gig backhaul site. Confirmed. This is going to be tremendous. Very excited about this build. And then, of course, T-Mobile did their upgrade a couple of weeks ago. They actually beat the AT&T tower crew here. Uh, so th this is where we're at right now. And Verizon has f just finished their upgrade on the other side, uh, finishing their tower site upgrade. And that's done. And that's going to go live any day now. So the SMT HQ is on deck for all things mid-band 5G with lots of fiber backhaul to push. All right, this is going to be awesome. I'm excited about this. Uh, sound off on anything you saw in the commentary in today's video what impressed you what did you enjoy do you have any questions i could try to answer those uh how do you think this site's going to perform now uh go ahead and tell me in the comment section below you all the voice of the people the smt nation let your voice be heard like share subscribe for more turn on that bell notifications icon to never miss an upload links in the description for my patreon page if you want to support us and get early access to content and exclusive videos not found anywhere else also, all business inquiries can go to the Gmail address in the description. My Twitter handle down there as well. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Peace.